So uh, we'll call this meeting to order at 5.02. And um, because I have COVID and don't feel well, um, I'm going to ask uh, Charlotte if she's there, if she would manage the meeting. I can't see for sure if she's there. Okay. I'm here. Are you there? Okay. Um, and I'm going to stay on the meeting. But I'm I think... here. I'm here, Janet. But I think... Okay. Good. Are, are you able to manage the, uh, the meeting, and uh, which is really focused on the financial form? I am. Are you ready to turn it over? Yes, it's all yours. Thank you. I'm Thank sorry. You. I'm very sorry you don't feel well. We all are, and you have all of our sympathy for sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. First day, so all it's right. really comfortable. Um. So this is the Board of Abatement, and we have some new people. <clears throat> so maybe we should have some introductions. Should we introduce everyone, just new people? Maybe everyone should no. just sort of say who they are. Um, I'm Charlotte Hannah Bassage, and uh, Janet, as you know, just heard, asked if I would chair this meeting. Amy Morby on the select board. Tegan Dickman Brown, town clerk and clerk for the board of abatement, so I'll be typing away. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Davis, select board. Uh, John McCullough, Lister, Zoning Administrator, Planning Commission, Design Advisory Board. <laughs> <laughs> Etc. Cetera. Who should has it? That's for us to Jordan Keyes, uh, Select Board. Uh, Wilson Hughes, Lister. Uh, Steve Sweeney, Lister. Michael Anio, Justice of Peace. Tina Bielenberg, or Christina Bielenberg, Justice of the Peace. Christina Holly, Select Board. And Winchester Select Board. Carrie Bradley, Town Administrator, Treasurer, Road Commissioner. Robert Hubler, <laughs> Justice of the Peace. Scott Passage, uh, something like uh, <laughs> Justice of the Peace. Justice, Justice of the Peace. Various <laughs> things. <laughs> Justice of the Peace. Oh, that's what you mean. That's why they're here. All right. So we have an agenda. And uh, the first thing on the agenda, do we? Uh, does anybody want to add or subtract, uh, add anything to the agenda? Do we need to cover anything additional? All right, then uh, the first thing on the agenda is to approve the minutes of May 13th, which Tegan, of course, sent us. <clears throat> um, if somebody would move it, then we can discuss. If someone would move um, a, a approval, we could then get discussed. I move that we approve the minutes of uh, the last meeting. Thank I you, second. Wilson. I second. Any uh, comments on the minutes? Mainly a question. I noticed um, Craig Line obviously was there, and he's not listed as present, and I don't know whether that's in. He wasn't the last one. What, was he there? Is he on, on He's the fifth? No. Is Not. he listed as present on Zoom? No. No. All right. I will add I'm not sure I missed it. Unless, I mean, if, if, if the intention is to only identify board members of the board of the faith, then that should be made clear. And then others. Could yeah. Be yes. Present. Yes, I agree. Yes. Yeah. I Good idea. <clears throat> uh, okay. Any other comments? Then uh, <clears throat> uh, can we accept the uh, minutes as uh, amended? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, thank you very much. The next thing on the agenda is to review and possibly approve the financial disclosure form. There's a couple extras down here by John. And, and you all got it in an email, too. Okay. And uh, who would like to um, help us see the... Um, 
the changes and to talk about the the form. There were several people working on it. So there were, but it was Janet and Dylan, who was also not here. Uh. And I was putting them into the document. So I suppose I was, I think that's everybody who worked on it. Um, so we had talked in the last meeting about creating, using the very detailed form we had uh, as a worksheet and then having a more simplified version for people to turn in and then that seemed like a lot of work and so we settled in that meeting on let's just have one simpler back and front guy. And so this is kind of what we settled on. It took all those categories we had minutely drawn out there and just sort of made them broad categories where you didn't have to itemize every little thing you purchased. Um, and I, I think we should also um, consider, when we're considering this information form, the change to the abatement application, which notes, uh, please complete the financial disclosure form to the best of your ability. Please also attach a sheet, um, et cetera. And we did talk about having someone act as a helper to anybody who wanted, who, who, who asked to fill that out. Um, uh, Tegan, would you say that when you give somebody an amendment request? I think so. Usually they, oftentimes we end up talking on the phone or emailing back and forth. And I usually tell them something along the lines of, if you have specific questions, if there's anything that you're not sure about, that they should get back to me and I'm happy to fill them in. So that's kind of the way that that's gone in the past. Yeah. I, I think it would also be just really helpful for people to know that if, um, if we're going to require this A, financial uh, information form, that we are happy to help with that, too. Yep. Um, so, so that if, because not everybody is used to dealing with putting up finances together. Can we also add that to the form? and do the, the italicized part at the top. If you need help, just ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that would be helpful. Anyone else? I, I just want um, maybe a point of discussion. Um, if you look at the statutory basis for the request of the baby, I'm not sure this form is appropriate for all of those categories. I see. I don't know if you need to clarify that. It, it says specifically if you're applying due to inability to pay. All oh, right. But is that, if you look at, at the statutory categories, is that clear? Um. Which category or categories this applies to? Uh, so, yeah, here. It says it right there on the form. It right, yeah. it, yes, it does say it on the form itself based on inability to pay. Okay, I guess we but have you the don't, statute in front of us. Some of the okay. categories, I don't right. think they're germane. So, are you suggesting that after the category that says, Taxes of persons unable to pay taxes, interest, da 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 da. That that should say, see the financial. See, see, you know, title such sections, and then and then specific examples because there there are some reasons in the statute for asking for a baby, but yes. not for. On yes, on ability to pay. pay. So what do you suggest, Tina? I'm suggesting that we include just, just the statute and the sections that are applicable. So this is, so I know that we have this form, mm -hmm. okay, and we have the statutory reasons here, mm -hmm. but are uh, we going to require this form? Uh, we're not going to require it for 24 BSA 1535A4, are we? Uh, no, no, but this does say based on inability to pay, so should we 
Do you want to clarify that in That's some what way? I'm, I'm suggesting we do. So okay. Do you like this financial information form is required for any applicant requesting an abatement based can, on inability to pay tax right. interest or fees per 24 VSA 1535A3? Yeah. Right. Yes. And it may, we may need it for a person who's died in solvent. I mean, if it's. Ah. I, that's my question. Are we going to require whoever's handling the estate or is the representative to complete this entire form? Or? Yeah, and uh, what about uh, real or personal property lost or destroyed during the year? Right. That might be appropriate also. I think it should be required for the unable to pay, and then maybe it's an option available to present information for the other categories. Does that make sense? Because um, if your whole house burned down, I, you don't need to fill out a form about how much you spend on groceries to say my whole house Yes, burned, burned down. down. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, where? Well, uh -huh. one solution would be to put the statutory section. Section. So that it, it absolutely would. Okay. That we want that Okay. Can we do that? <coughs> Certainly. Tegan? So the, you want me to put it for inability to pay or for more than one? I want clarification on that. Well, you've got A3 for cl clearly. Yes. A1 may or may not. I, I, but that, so do you want a sentence that says you may also find this form helpful if you're applying under A1 and A or A4? I'm, I'm opening this yeah. up for this session. It seems to me that this part in red mm -hmm. uh, might be a good place to put that because people are paying attention to what's in red perhaps more than the top here. Yeah, do you think that's... that's fine. I just, since we were talking about the fact that they were linked to each other, is what's in red, what's actually the applicants are going to see? I thought what's in red was just for us to see what T what Tegan was recommending we add. Red was the recommended language to add, but it was just a suggestion. We can certainly change it in any way we need. I like the red. I don't think it's going to the applicant with that text in red, is it? We are here to discuss whether it is or whether we want oh, to change okay. that text. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly possible to do that, yeah. whether they download it online or got a question to, yeah. um, to clarify. I think in, in previous dialogues, we this type of form can be something that we can request, but we can't say that we require it. Is that right? So we can't force anybody to fill this information out and submit it. Uh, Is that a fair characterization? It, that was not my understanding. Am I wrong? So, because... So... Uh, Okay. Excuse me. Um, I think we can require it for ability to pay. Um, I, I think we can't. Um, obviously, if somebody doesn't want to fill it out, then they don't file an application. Um, so there's no requirement that people give us their financial information unless they're requesting an abatement uh, for inability to pay. There is also something in the procedure, I believe, that says that we could ask for any additional information that we need um, in any of the categories. So that might be where there are pieces of the form that would actually be helpful to us. I, but so not as a, as I think that's fair. And so I have kind of a, a follow-up question. I'm wondering, because there are so many potential options to, to select rather than trying to parse out which one should apply to which and what somebody should feel required to submit or not. We modify the language a little bit um, so that we're in that section in red. We're just listing examples of, uh, of things to su submit um, relative to their application uh, you know, for, um, for the destroyed properties. Like it, 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 there may be other documentation that they're willing to give mm -hmm. up, you know, for, mm -hmm. or, or put forth for an mm -hmm. error or mistake. It'd be nice if they were bringing that information mm -hmm. and submitting that as, as facts for consideration. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I think if we add a couple of bullet points and then just modify the, the language, the lead-in language in red, um, 
strongly recommending supporting documentation and then where we list the financial disclosure specifically we can say uh, relative to requests for um, uh, for persons unable to pay um, so yes we it seems to me if somebody is asking for a financial help they ought to be willing to share financial information and so we do need to be really clear if you're asking based on an inability to pay we need financial information because we can't make a decision without it so um, uh, you know however we do it as long as that is really clear and that it might be appropriate in other uh, instances as well yeah so uh, Tegan, is that specific enough for you? So I was thinking something along the lines of, we strongly suggest that you submit one or more of the following documents. In particular, if you are applying based on an inability to pay uh, financial information, we cannot grant an abatement without sufficient financial information. Yes. As evidence. Yes. Good. Yes. And then I would have the two bullets plus the financial disclosure as the option. Yeah. Good. That makes a lot of sense. Good. Yeah. Just, this is my first one. So, Craig Line, is he, is all, all the taxes he, he wants to abate? Yes. The entire amount? Yes. And but that's a different year. Yes, that's not exactly. That's I understand that, but I, I just don't know what, what, what we're talking about. We're talking about anybody, anybody. Who, who asks for an abatement based right. on inability to pay. And in the past, most people have offered that information. Um, and, but we haven't been specific about what do we expect. Well, would, so would, this would be also, standardizing. Would also ask for a tax return? We did not. That's, that's, that's the number one, I think. That tells you everything. At least it tells you income. It does tell you income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, one of the things I'd ask for. So, can I jump in? Yeah. Um, jump in. Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, I couldn't quite hear, but I, uh, Bill, will you yeah, suggest yeah. a tax return as, as a supporting document for somebody was? Um, I, I would have some. Uh, reservations yes. between that there's a lot of other information on a tax return that I don't think and, and we can't really uh, promise to keep it um, keep it uh, confidential um, and tax returns of course don't deal with assets and for inability to pay assets are probably a fairly significant uh, component of a person's ability so um, I think that the reason we went with the financial form is is that we could go directly to the information that we wanted um, without asking for a tax return. Mm. Mm. That's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. Other comments? <coughs> So um, I'd like to make a suggestion on the first chart. Um, I think there should be an entry in this first chart of monthly expenses for child care, mm -hmm. as opposed to wrapping it under other, just because for some people child care is so significant. I would, I would want that to be in the forefront. So I think that should have a line of its own. Uh, I think we're only considering the a motion to approve just the form, though, or are we looking at both the disclosure and the application? They're two different yeah. items. Right. So we've been talking about the application. It'd be so, good um, to wrap that, I think, or wrap up amendments to, to the application before moving to, to the awarding. The, the other one. Yes, so it, um, as, as T you just said, there are two items on the agenda. One is to review and approve and possibly approve the form. Oh, okay. And then the second one is any adjusted wording on the application. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. 
So um, Barbara, hang on to that until the next one. So um, I, I believe at the last meeting, uh, we did agree that we wanted to have a financial disclosure form that we uh, would require. And so here it is, we're looking at version two, and um, do we wish, are we ready to talk about approving this financial, um, a financial disclosure form? Okay, good. Uh, so um, uh, are we approving this financial disclosure form? Just need a suggestion for it. Well, yeah, so I maybe we need to approve the wording first and then approve the form. Okay, so are you asking to approve the application or the financial form? Well, that's what I'm asking. Which comes first? Do we approve the wording and include Barbara's suggestion and maybe possible other suggestions? Well, Barbara's suggestion is on the financial disclosure form, not the rules of procedure that we were discussing. Before. Yeah, I, I, I was doing it in the order of the agenda, but I'm following your lead here. All right. Well, I think so. I, I think there was consensus on the application that seemed like pretty clear language uh, and consensus around uh, the edit. So I'd make a motion to uh, to approve the application, and then we can have a dialogue around the financial can I, disclosure. Can I just say one thing? Sure. Is mm -hmm. that it's it says it says um, you want them to uh, fill out the financial disclosure form. This thing says. Or financial information. Yes. Okay. yes. Thank right. you. Okay. Right. Good. Good catch. Which do we want to call? Disclosure. All right. So the the changes that I have are the portion down below with the suggestion, or the strongly suggest that you submit one or more of the following documents, and then also Scott's suggestion that we put a little note saying, if you need help, just ask for it. Those are the changes I've heard. Mm -hmm. right. Would it make sense to also include something like, if there's other information you would like the board to consider, please enclose it. Send, give us that, sure. attach that. Well, there is a bullet that says yes. a brief description on the basis of your statement. Did you mean any other documents? We any other documents, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so those are the adjustments to the abatement application. Are we ready to vote on that? All right. Um, all those in favor then, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, we didn't, no one made a motion or second the motion. We just did a bit. Uh, I'll move it. Thank you. You're right. Thank you. I'll second You can it. tell I'm rusty at this. <laughs> I wouldn't have noticed if I wasn't. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, pipe up if I'm, I'm happy to have some people tell me I'm not doing it properly. Okay, so. We now we we will turn to the financial disclosure form itself, okay? Um, and uh, Barbara, this is where we talk about child care. Yeah. Um, you're right. The child care is a major expense. Uh, um, uh, not quite in the same category as pets. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, does that seem agreeable? Yes. Mm -hmm. Other uh, comments? Does anything at the top need to be changed yes. to work with the revised um, application? As, as previously suggested, it should parallel and be called a disclosure, disclosure form. form. Yep. Yes, yes. And um, I keep the piece that says based on ability to pay. Uh, 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 but the very first sentence, the financial information form is required. Disclosure. Yes, I'll change that. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, okay, you got that. 
So I'm after sorry, the disclosure form is it's the required language I was keying in on this time. After we had the discussion, I amended that to this financial disclosure form is strongly recommended for any applicant requesting an abatement based on inability to pay per 24 VSA 1535A3. Um, I like that we have um, said that this is a uh, both this is a quasi judicial uh, hearing and what um, the implication is for the public release of the information they give us. I think that's very helpful. Uh, other in the uh, table. Breaking out uh, child care from other expenses, I wonder if we have health care and prescriptions and then list uh, insurance costs and out of pockets, but we don't necessarily list, um, well, I guess that would be an out of pocket expense, but uh, I guess medical bills in particular uh, that, that may have been incurred. I know that's kind of dicey territory to uh, try to get disclosure around, but if well, there been significant. Yeah. So health care, that's what I thought health care okay. meant. And then insurance is one thing. And sure. then what are you paying? Okay. So all of those are medical expenses. We could change it to medical expenses. We thought that. Is that better? That is that clearer? I think that might be a little yeah. clearer. Yeah, because I'm not sure why it says health care prescriptions. Okay. Medical expenses. Better. Yes. And keep the parentheses? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I closed that parentheses that was open. It's still in the closet. Good catch. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I have a question about the mortgage payment, which is listed at the very top mm -hmm. under housing and then down at the bottom again. Do we want to have it in both places? Down at the bottom, there's valuable property yeah. amount yeah. remaining and monthly mortgage payment due. Do well, do I we want it in both places. Is the question, or do we want? Are we asking uh, separate questions about what is your basic mortgage payment, and then how much of your mortgage are you? Um, uh, many people may be behind, and so. Oh, is that what that means? I would look at the top as what is your mortgage, what, how much are you required to pay a month, and then I would also say, you know, monthly due means sort of, how are you doing on your mortgage? That is not clear. But that is month, not clear. Monthly, it would be, yeah. it'd be monthly. Yeah. Right. So monthly, so what does that mean? Mortgage in arrears or something is what we're getting at at the bottom? All mortgage payments do or something. I don't know. Because well, amount remaining on mortgage is also on there. Well, it, yeah, it, but that it, doesn't tell us if they're in arrears on their mortgage. No. Wait, Janet has So it seems to me that there's two questions on the mortgage. So it seems to me that there's two questions on the mortgage. One is how much do you pay a month, and the other is how large is your mortgage. Um, you know, how much how much do you still owe uh, um, on your house? And I I don't have the form in front of me because I'm on my computer here. Um, but I, I want to be sure that we it, we get at both questions um, because they're slightly different. We've got part of this is trying to define or help them define what their what their monthly expenses are. Part of it is giving us information about what their assets may be. Um, and then the, the third is an assessment of what their outstanding amounts due are if they have if they if they have back payments that are due, so that we can get a better assessment of you know how much they're in arrears. You know, is is an abatement consideration <laughs> going to help them out of an acute period of financial distress and move them through that? Um, well, and, and I guess also, do they have assets such that could be leveraged to to do that without abatement? I mean, that's, and from my perspective, that seems to be kind of the basis of what we're trying to get at. So uh, we may want to 
have the top table be more well defined as what are your monthly expenses as a way as like a budgeting exercise and then uh, and then we have something more clearly defined as an asset categorization and another one of uh, you know bills due essentially yeah and we don't we don't have a well, it does say other debts and liabilities but um, uh, it, you're right, it's not clear what we're really asking, uh, but we do want to know, are people behind on their mortgage? Are people behind because that sh And we usually ask in our meetings, um, do you have a plan for how you're going to pay your future taxes? Um, and that seems to be a very relevant question, so I'm not sure how we get at that. Um, uh, That's a bullet point. This yeah, where is that? Uh, on the, the one we just approved, the yeah, hearing request. Yes. One of the bullets is a plan to prevent the need for an abatement request. Excellent. In, excellent. I'm so glad that's there. Thank you. So I, I, this is just an information sheet so that when the person does come in, that if we see something glaring, that we will ask the question to, yes. to, to, to uh, get the info. Now, right. To expect to get all the info on this form is impossible. Impossible. Impossible, but it's fair. But it is but very. It's quite. It's has. pretty. It's pretty thorough yeah. at the same time. But I think we do want to know: Are you behind on your mortgage? If so, how much? Yeah. Can we just ask that? Yes. Are you behind on your mortgage? Um, yes. Nice. What is your mortgage payment? How much uh, it remains on your mortgage, and are you behind? So, it doesn't so maybe, ask for credit card debt anywhere. I'm sorry? It doesn't ask for credit card debt. It oh, just yeah. says other debts and liabilities. We didn't have a chart of specific. debt. Some options. people have a lot of money in debt. Yes, credit they do. Yes. Um, do you, uh, is it sufficient to say under other debts and liabilities, for example, credit card? Any other specifics for? I mean, they may be behind on their car payments. They may. Uh, I think we got current value amount of monthly payment due. Yeah, but it doesn't they, ask they if may you're behind. Owe the IRS. <laughs> That's okay. So I think the first one we did last time had 20 pages. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But I think it's helpful. Because you know somebody might not um, necessarily say, "Oh yeah, I owe the IRS," or uh, student loans. All right. So we've got several examples under other debts and liabilities to help people think about what that category means. All right. Going back to the mortgage question. Does that mean those three in the middle between the charts, value of property, amount remaining on mortgage, instead of monthly mortgage payment, do we want to ask that question about being behind, or do we want to keep that in addition to the request for mortgage information at the top? I was going to suggest splitting out housing at the top okay. and having one that's monthly mortgage payment, and then the next one be other housing expenses. You all like to squish things in here. <laughs> I know. The formatting on this form is always it's the hard. worst part. Okay, so I. And then we could change the monthly mortgage payment down below to any outstanding. Are you behind? Yeah. yeah. What do people think of that? I think that's helpful. Well, I see Janet reflecting. I don't know whether she was the problem. Janet, do you have some comments? No you, um, you need to unmute. Sorry. Um, on, on the way we're dealing with the mortgage, I think. Um, on, on the way we're dealing with the mortgage, I think I think those suggestions are fine. I, I think they're um, they're it's all of it useful information. So, if somebody's behind on their mortgage, they're probably also behind on fuel bills and car payments and so on. Um, no. Make that easier on that top table rather than having 
just the one column, we can have one that is, you know, monthly bill or budget, and then the other one with uh, another column for outs, uh, overdue. Out, overdue, overdue, overdue balances. Or okay. do you want to do the same thing for the vehicle column? Yeah. Yeah. I have a feeling that asking people for uh, feeling that asking people for a itemized list of everything that they're behind on is going is going to be tough for people um, by the time they're at that point. So I just want to be cautious that we don't get too far into the weeds on that kind of information. I just think I just think it's difficult for people to pull it together. This second chart. Graph, uh, graph on here, chart on here. Do we really need to know the kind of cars that they own and the ATVs and so forth? It seems to me if we need more space to allow TGIT to format some more stuff up in the first chart, we could just add a line at the first chart for cost uh, total of all uh, automobile payments or Vehicle debts stuff. or something. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure why we need this chart down here. So I yeah. pulled it out kind of for the same reason we wanted to do that list under other de debts and liabilities is you might not think about your ATV or your snowmobile as being something that we want to know about unless you see it here on the list. That was that was my thought. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's a good point because people might not. Maybe there could just be an asterisk next to that listing with a footnote. Do you have something Oh, what people's vehicles? Oh, what people's vehicles? How many vehicles they have? Um, I think that for a lot of people, that's an asset. If you're going to include them all, you're going to include votes, I think. I will add votes. Yeah. We keep it. No. Um, so, uh, Barbara, are you suggesting that go up in this? I, well, upper? when I looked at it, I just didn't understand why we needed to know what kind of vehicle they all own. It just seems more detailed, and we're not going to make, make a decision based on that. No. And it just seemed like it was another one of the monthly expenses. It's just that we spilled it out into and expanded it in its own separate chart. Yes, I wasn't we did. Quite sure why. Okay. Okay. I think it's important to see some of this stuff because, you know, if I'm making a decision to have somebody who doesn't have a snowmobile or a four-wheeler and everything else and to say, oh, okay, we'll pay your taxes, but, you know, poor sucker down the line is paying his taxes and, and going without. Um, I think that's a big um, thing with this. So it's about the point. Maybe we just take the, kind of back to the previous comments, maybe we just take that table and split it so that we have it represented as a cost, uh, monthly payment cost for vehicles and, and other other boats and et cetera, et cetera, but then also listed again under under assets, you know, for somebody to disclose the value of, of all mm -hmm. of those things mm -hmm. as well. And, and we do have it there. And, yeah. Yeah, and then we just avoid that middle we, we capture what should be the yeah. The monthly carrying costs of those things, if they're if they've got payments, and, okay. and then we capture See, what their value is. What the value the is on the assets. Yeah. That sounds. Um, and I think Janet's point is fair about you know the outstanding balance. We can just ask and yes. make notes and we can in the ask. margins adjacent to Certainly. that as we roll through it. Absolutely, we can ask. Does that work for you, Steve? Yeah, that was just. Yep. I'd like to you know have a feeling that. They're trying, or you know, what it's true. For their, their, their Some family. people have very full driveways. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go. Oh, Tegan, you're good at keeping up with us. How are you oh, doing? I'm doing my best. So, four vehicles. We're going to remove the big chart. Yep. And add it to total monthly expenses with just a category for monthly. And yep. then maybe a little asterisk that says, don't forget about your boat, your ATV, you know, yep. um, in a nice professional way. And then keep the one under financial assets. Mm -hmm. That's that's yep. order. Okay. Yes, then I have that. Okay. And does that capture 
that captures monthly due for all vehicles, but it doesn't capture total. Well, the value it captures under assets, it doesn't capture total debt associated with those vehicles. Did you buy it last year and you're paying it off still, or have you had it forever and it's not worth it? I think getting back to Janet's comment, I think that's a fair question yeah. that we can go, that we can go through. So yeah. rather than yeah. you know burdening or, yeah. or making this feel like too much of a burden yeah. for anybody, if if, if if there's kind of a sniff test that maybe there there may be some assets worth leveraging or with equity um, to consider, we can ask that question as well as what, what any back due bills would be for that particular item. Okay. Yeah. Scott? Um, in the rules of procedure, um, which, the, which the applicant has read, mm -hmm. um, under 4F, we talk about allow the taxpayer to prevent verbal and documentary evidence supporting the request. It might, uh, would it make sense for some, I mean, we keep thinking of more things we want. Would it make sense to add the, something in there, like, for example, or things, information such as, rather than try to get everything on this one form, and I, the procedure is not on the agenda, but. Um, yeah, we're, um, where, where are you looking? The rules of procedure, different. Whole different oh, form. that's a whole different form. The rules of right. procedure. It's the back of this, yes. but we didn't make. We had made it. Oh, I see. We have no proposed changes to it, so I didn't print it out. Sorry. Uh, so if you printed it out, it says abatement on the front and on the back rules of procedure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you, Scott, because I didn't notice that. Mm -hmm. And to repeat it for F. Uh, Four is all about the hearing itself, and four F is allow the taxpayer to present verbal and documentary evidence supporting the abatement request to the board. That sounds good. Um, are you su and suggesting? Well, if we just keep if we just keep piling things on, maybe we could put it there. And as for example, student debt uh, amount owed on your vehicles, or blah blah blah. Instead of trying to shoehorn it into we can also just ask them when they're Yes, yeah. we can, I like that. We can okay. also just ask them. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, uh, a hearing that goes both ways is, is, uh, is um, a better hearing, in yes. my opinion. Jordan, you I, yeah, I, on that? I get, I mean, just for the efficiency of everybody's time, I think it's nice to try to get uh, as much of that information up front as okay. possible so that we're asking more for clarifications of, of fact and, and that sort of uh, so, so, mm -hmm. so, Tegan, uh, you said that you frequently have more than one conversation. Um, and is that because people uh, ask you what it is that they should include or? what they should say? So my sample size is two right now, so uh, I can't tell I you see. how it always Thank goes you. or usually yep. goes. Uh, one of them was just very anxious about the procedure okay. and anxious about coming and talking to this big group of yep. people, and so that was the, most of the conversations. Yep. Um, with the other applicant, it was more about, I don't even know, wanting to make sure that we scheduled it appropriately so that they could be here, wanting to make sure, I don't even know. I think okay. we just emailed back and forth a number of okay. times. Okay, yeah. so good. It, 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 what I hear is that this is a back and forth at the, at the beginning part, and it does seem appropriate that you should be as helpful as you can be, but you are that way with all things yeah. <laughs> that, that affect the, so, um, all right. Where are we? Uh, hang on, j before you go, Barbara, where are we? Um, where? Quarter till. No, I'm, I'm asking in terms of the changes that we've made. We've made several um, changes and we've um, condensed the uh, vehicle part. We've um, clarified mortgages. We've 
uh, we've given examples for debts and liabilities. We've changed a little bit in the introductory uh, part. Um, Janet looked like she was wondering. Janet? Could, could I jump in with a question? Um, jump in with a question. Um, Tegan, when you uh, you read something, um, some introductory language um, where it said that this, I think it said that the form is strongly recommended um, was the phrase. And I'm curious whether we've decided not to require it, um, but only to recommend it. I, I thought we were requiring it. So um, anyway, just trying to understand. We do need to be clear about that. So thank you for asking. Um, I think the point was made that you can't make anyone do anything. And so we can tell them that this is something that they should do, but we can't deny them the right to a hearing because they didn't fill out the financial disclosure form, I believe. We can That's, deny them relief. We can, we can deny, deny them. The exactly. Yes, we, we, can, deny the we can deny the abatement. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And so that was the wording yeah. that was going to go in the abatement hearing request was. You know, if we don't have enough information, we will not be able to grant your request on any grounds. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's important language. That, so I, you know, put it into context of why, and then, and, mm -hmm. you know, I also kind of struggle with the require phrasing because what what what's the teeth in that? And then, so I wonder if, if that goes to a we request and strongly encourage, and then and then give the context for why. Um, um, and does that get us close that. enough to saying uh, flatly require? Because I, you know, I don't. It's a, it's a semantics thing, but it's. Mm -hmm. well, what do other towns do? I should, I should have uh, researched that. Maybe other towns require it. Require it. I've never looked at growing town. I haven't really looked at any other towns for folks. Some require it. Some don't require anything beyond the basic abatement here in the West. Because I looked at. I don't know, maybe half a dozen when we started talking about this. And some did have fairly detailed forms, and some didn't. So it's kind of all over the map. I think Janet was going to have a comment. Janet, do you have a comment? Um, I guess I was just going to say, I guess I was just going to say that it, I think it needs to be really clear because if somebody applies and they're rejected because they didn't fill out the form and we haven't said it's required then i think i think there is a sort of a legitimate um criticism of our process um if it if it's necessary to fill out the form in order to receive an abatement for inability to pay i think we should and maybe the word required is is problematic for people but i think we need to say so I don't think we would be denying them because they didn't fill out the form. We would be denying them because they didn't provide sufficient evidence, whatever that was. If they don't bring the financial disclosure form, but they bring enough other evidence, like if they bring their whole file of folders of overdue bills and this, that, yeah. and the other, then they don't have to fill out a big checklist in my book. Sorry, Barbara. If, if we want to not have to say the word required, we could say, we could say something in the introduction like, Completing this financial disclosure form is a part of the application process, and just leave it at that, without saying required or requested. <clears throat> I like that better. Oh. Okay. Others? So just, just a reminder that we are running yep. out of time. Can I have one other suggestion? On that yes, too? please. Okay. Yes, please. Toward the very bottom, just above the last folded line, the question that says, have you filed your homestead declaration in the current or previous years? <coughs> That's actually two different questions. That could have, if you have a yes or a no for either one. So I think it needs to be broken out into this year, previous years, whatever it is we really want to know, because it may be yes for current previous years, but no for this year. Well, it wasn't, the wording was specifically and to mean, yes, I've done it for all of them, or no, I haven't done it for all of those. That was yeah. my thinking, but I'm happy to change it. Yeah, and I'm Janet sure. Janet may have some insight on this. Uh, Janet, do you have some comment there? No. No. Okay. I'm, no. 
either way is fine. Yeah. Also just pointed out that we um, have, have about five minutes left, but we also have a hearing scheduled for later this month. So I think it's important for us to take the time we need for this for this form and to be clear um, about what we are going to expect at our hearings. So um, I think we're I think we're toward the end here. Uh, but let's make sure that we include everything we want to include uh, before we wrap up. Okay. So are there other comments? Yeah, I think that we're, all we're looking for here is the baseline so that we have an opportunity to try to treat everybody the same. And with, you know, by suggesting that they fill it out, it just helps us yes. to treat them the same as everybody else. Exactly. And, and, and thank and you. what we look for is, yes. you know, doesn't really make any difference. Just and thank you for reminding us that that's one of the reasons that we developed this in the first place is so that everybody was on a level playing field in terms of what we expected. Because um, if we just say we'd like financial information, that's not very specific. I, I would just say to people, if we need to change this down the road, we can do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. It may yeah. be the legislature yes. will be yes. forming a committee to look at the town processes. We'll come up with a whole bunch yep. of suggestions about what we need. Absolutely. That is always true of any document, for sure. Barbara. Thank you, Tina. So based on that, I've moved that we uh, adopt this financial disclosure form with all the edits that Tegan has been capturing for us tonight so that we can use it, use it in an upcoming hearing, knowing that we could change it. It's a live document, yep. a living document that we can change at any point in time, but that we, I move, I move that we accept it as edited tonight. A second. Any further discussion? Are you all ready to vote? All right, all those in favor, please, of Barbara's motion, please say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, the motion is passed. Thank you all. So, uh, there is one more item on our agenda. Do Charlotte, before we get to that, so once I have made these changes, I should pass this on to our current applicant. Do you all give yes, that? Please. Okay. yes, please. Yes, please. Would you okay. send the it's out to all of us? I'll send it out to everybody. Yep. Yes. All right. We have one more uh, item on the agenda, which is new legislation regarding delinquent taxes and abatement. Is there anyone who would like to speak to this? Yes, that's me also. Uh, we, this came up last time, Janet brought it, but we didn't have a whole lot of time to talk about it. And it either just passed or it hadn't quite passed yet, but now it's it's been circulating. Um, I just wanted to point out some of the, the big things that affect us. It, there was a little bit of a wording change um, to number four. Instead of a manifest error on the part of the listers, it's a clear or obvious error on the part of the listers. Uh -huh. We don't get any say there. Um, they added something that I felt we were already kind of beginning to do. The written decision shall provide sufficient explanation to indicate to the parties what was considered and what was decided. The decision shall address the arguments raised by the applicant. Prior to issuing a written decision, the board may request additional relevant information or documentation related to the case. I feel we were doing a pretty good job with that, yep. but that's now state law. Okay. Um, it also said that the legislative body of the municipality, by a majority vote, may abate de minimis amounts of taxes, etc. Oh, yeah. So the select board did vote to do that. Do under fifteen dollars. We had done under five dollars about four months ago, and then they will consider at some point in the tax year going into doing that on their own, so that we don't have to make it a bullet item. Uh -huh. If anyone disagrees with that, I suggest you take it up with the select. Maybe I need clarity. Is that a decision for the whole board of abatement as opposed I, to the select board? I think we did put on that, didn't we? No, but to, to, to address the select board taking it over, that yeah. decision. Oh, I see. I think, I think that, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but that rests with the board of abatement. Uh, well, the, the new statute, the amendment statute says the legislative body of the municipality. 
So that's the select board. Okay. There is a big section about people coming and requesting abatement as a group, all for the same reason. And I'm not sure why that has come about. I'm not sure what's happening that groups of people are requesting abatement, but that is something we could anticipate happening at some point. And it gives a how-to of how to do that. Well, that certainly would help when there's a flood that mm -hmm. like when there is a flood. diminishes the yeah. property base. Um, or pandemic. Yes. And then they're putting together a working group to look at tax abatement and tax sales. Uh, so we'll probably get more information coming down about that soon. So that's it. Is there any questions about that? My clock still says 557. We've got three more minutes. Well, I, I appreciate the summary and uh, uh, interpretation. That's very helpful. So one more thing. Yes. Uh, next year, I may not be here. OK. Uh, Probably out of state, but it could be here, just because of the schedule. So who's going to share this next year? Who's going to? Share. Yeah. So um, yeah. So let I've me been jump asked. in on that. Yeah. So let me jump in on that. Uh, Craig Wine has got another application in um, that he's already submitted, and it's set for a hearing on the 8th of July. Uh, 22. I, 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 and I had asked Charlotte if she would manage that hearing, and she said she would. So that's the plan. And I'll be there, but I won't share, and I won't vote on it. Move to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.